everybody, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from HP let us take a look at their new Pavilion X2. This is a detachable and that means you can pull the uh, screen off here and use it as a tablet if you wish. And as you can see, I have mine uh, configured to go into the uh, Windows 10 tablet mode when I pull it off the keyboard and when I put it back on, I'll get my desktop back with the start menu. So a nice little feature, you can kind of go back and forth between tablet and desktop mode. Uh, the base here, the keyboard comes with it. It is magnetic too, so you don't have to really latch it in at all. It just kind of uh, attaches to it and the magnets will actually guide it back in. So it really does feel pretty nice that way. Uh, so there's no latch or anything to detach. You can just pull it off uh, and get going there. What I like about it is that it does go back a little bit further than some of these other detachables have, have done, at least the ones that I've tested in the past. And what's really cool is that if you go too far, uh, it will just detach like this. So it won't crack it or <laughs> snap off. Uh, if you have a kit or something and they push it back too far, it's just going to detach completely. Uh, so a nice little safety feature they worked into it, uh, which was nice to see. So some neat uh, ways to use it. You can also flip the screen uh, off here and put it on backwards. So if you're on a plane or something and want a way to just kind of prop the, uh, the tablet up for uh, using it as a uh, display for a movie or something, you can do that. The keyboard gets disabled in this mode, as does the trackpad. Uh, but of course, the touch screen will continue to work and you can uh, use it that way. And of course, you can put it into tent mode if you want also. So when it's on backwards here, it's going to default back to uh, tablet mode if you've configured it that way. Uh, but of course, if you put it uh, back on this way, you should be uh, good to go. Now, this is a 10 inch display. Uh, it is IPS, so you've got really decent viewing angles uh, most of the time. It's going to look a little weird here in the studio. The lights are kind of uh, blowing it out a little bit because of the casing color here, but uh, it does look pretty good. I wish it was a slightly brighter. Um, it does look fine to me as I'm looking at it here, but I, I have seen displays go a little bit brighter than this one, but it's uh, certainly uh, nice enough for viewing movies and stuff. We're going to look at Cody in a few minutes with a Blu-ray uh, MKV file. I'm really pleased with the display quality on here. Really, really nice. And the display is 1280 by 800, so essentially a 720p display. Uh, this is 299 as configured. It's got two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and an Atom Bay Trail uh, Z3736F. It's just slightly faster than some of the Bay Trails we've seen on some of the other uh, low-cost PCs we've looked at. So this is not the new uh, Cherry Trail X5 processor we might start seeing on some of these devices. This is the prior generation version, so the graphics might be a little bit slower, uh, but quite frankly, at this price point, uh, you're going to see pretty much the same uh, perceivable performance for the most part. I'm very pleased with the keyboard, surprisingly, because I don't like small keys on my keyboard. I like my full-size keys. Uh, whatever they've done on this keyboard, I can type really comfortably on it. And I haven't had a keyboard with this size, these size keys that I can actually type very well on. I think they've uh, done a nice spacing between the keys and the travel and the spring back is really good on it too. So it's hard to see on camera here, but uh, these keys do travel down quite a bit, but they spring back really nicely. And whatever they've done, it actually feels right to me. So I've been very pleased with that. Uh, the trackpad is nice and wide, a little bit uh, springy to me, uh, but what I did do is disable the uh, touch to tap, you know, the touch to click uh, function. So I have it just having, I have to actually click it down. This is a click pad uh, to get my click. And that, that made it a little bit easier for me to operate. You can kind of, you have to kind of dig through some, uh, some of the menus to get to that setting to turn off the touch to click. Uh, but once I did that, the trackpad was a, a better experience for me. What I like is that they've put all of the ports uh, into the tablet portion of the device. So you get all of your ports uh, with or without the keyboard attached. And again, the keyboard comes with it. Uh, so you have a full-size USB port here. You also get a USB Type-C port also. This is going to be used for charging, but you can also use it uh, as an additional USB port. So they're slowly, we're slowly starting to see the USB Type-C making its way into uh, various devices. I should note though that uh, both of these ports are operating at USB 2 speed. So you're not going to get the new faster speeds that you get out of USB Type-C or even a USB 3 uh, speed out of either of these USB ports. These are USB 2.0 ports, so you're going to max out at like 400 megabits per second on both of those. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to get high speed performance out of either port. Uh, you do also get an HDMI out here as well. So you can plug this in, have a USB device going and plug it into an external display if you wish. And you've got a micro SD card slot here for augmenting its onboard storage. Uh, when I booted it up for the first time, it had about 8.3 gigabytes free on the internal storage. So having a, a SD card slid in there might give you a little bit uh, extra space. And you've got a Windows button right here on the side for getting back home when you're in uh, tablet mode. So if I push that button, of course, we get that uh, home screen back up. The center point here does not work as that. So if you want your home button there, you've got to push it on the side. Uh, you've got a volume rocker over here 
Uh, and then on the uh, other side here, we just have a headset adapter and there's a power switch on the top. And that is uh, pretty much all of the ports and buttons that you're going to have on it. Now the tablet portion weighs 1.3 pounds. Uh, when it's attached to the keyboard, uh, the whole package is just under two and a half pounds at 2.48 pounds. Uh, so pretty uh, convenient to carry around, pretty small and lightweight. And again, I'm really impressed uh, with the keyboard typing comfort on it too. So a pretty nice uh, all-in-one package that you can get, get the tablet when you want it, uh, but you can also uh, have it uh, operate with its keyboard case here and it isn't uh, all that bulky. The battery lasts about anywhere from seven to nine hours. I was getting pretty much right in that range in my testing. In fact, when I was first using it, I always load in all my software, which does take a little bit of uh, time and energy to do so, both on my part and on the computer's part. Uh, and it was able to uh, give me pretty much a whole day's worth of use on it too. So I was quite pleased with the uh, battery life on there. There is a bunch of stuff that uh, came installed. You get some of the Nagware from McAfee. There's an HP thing that's running constantly. There's a couple other things that uh, you might wanna pop off on there too. So not a lot of junkware, but I'm getting very sensitive to that when I buy computers that I really don't like to have all this stuff on there. I just like them to be clean. This one is not completely clean. Uh, so there are a couple things you might wanna uninstall, but nothing uh, terribly alarming uh, that came in on the box. So that's the overall hardware. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, we're gonna run our usual barrage of tests on here, starting with the New York Times on the web. So we'll load up the new Edge browser and hit that address up and see how fast things render on screen. Uh, the overall render time feels pretty nicely. It doesn't have wireless AC. This is 2.4 gigahertz only uh, at wireless N speed. So good enough for what the hardware would, will support. And I did find that the browsing experience is pretty close to what I found on other low-end tablets running with these Atom processors. So it does feel uh, on par with other devices there. But what kind of separates it, at least from some of the other lower cost devices, is the screen quality. So we've got a nice IPS display on here. Uh, it looks really nice and rich. And because it's only 10 inches, even though it's only uh, 1280 by 800, uh, it does look uh, very nice. You don't see a lot of pixelization and things are uh, quite nice to read on screen. So uh, again, a nice uh, overall feel to uh, how the web browses on it. The next thing we're gonna check out is some web video at my YouTube channel. So we'll go there and watch that video come up and start playing automatically. So you can see how fast that happens. So a lot of stuff happening uh, as the page is rendering here. And there comes my video. I'll go full screen with this. This is playing at uh, 1080p, but again, the display here is only 1280 by 800. So you could probably get away with the uh, 720p version. But either way though, you can see it's uh, playing back just fine. The frame rate is decent, uh, which you can't see again because we're shooting the screen with my camera is how nice the color looks on it. It is a really nice looking display. I'm quite pleased with that. Of course, you can use the touch screen to start and stop here, but haven't seen any lag on YouTube at all. Uh, even with the uh, slower wireless here, it does seem to be uh, playing back quite nicely. On the Octane test, which is something I run on all of my computers that I test to see how it compares as far as, as, far as its web browsing performance is concerned, on the Chrome browser, we scored 6,496. Again, puts it right in line with those other Atom Bay Trail processors. A little bit behind though, the uh, Celeron chip that's in the HP Stream 11, which is that uh, $200 PC we looked at last year, but that processor is clocked a little bit higher than this one is. So you'll see a little bit better performance out of there, but quite honestly, it's not very noticeable. And the screen on this one uh, is so much better. And of course you get the flexibility of having a tablet when you want to. So uh, let's take a look next at its Microsoft Word performance to see how we can get some uh, work done on this thing. All right, we'll load up our usual newsletter template that we look at on all of our devices here also and see how fast we can uh, scroll through the page. So again, this feels about what those other Atom uh, chips uh, feel like. So if you saw some of my computer stick reviews or some of the other low-end Windows tablets we've looked at, uh, this is about the same performance, but you can very uh, easily work with something that's a little bit more involved than maybe your standard Word document. So you can imagine just writing out a paper for school or something is going to be uh, just fine on here. And of course we can start uh, typing some text in here and you can see it keeps up pretty well there. And no review on this channel is complete without a little Minecraft. So you can see how well it runs on here. It actually runs very well on this computer. I have the Optifine plugin installed, uh, which gives us a little bit of a performance boost over the uh, basic Minecraft installation. But this is running with the fancy graphics and uh, there is a version of Minecraft that is made just for Windows 10, but this is the original one that most people are still running. And as you can see, we're getting really nice frame rates here, uh, partly because this display is only 1280 by 800. So if you were uh, looking at some of my other reviews, a lot of those other Bay Trail devices were plugged into a 1080p display and it was rendering more pixels. So that obviously slows it down. So as you can see here, uh, running the original Minecraft on 
uh, this uh, device is really performing quite nicely. Uh, one thing I did have to do was turn off the uh, palm detection on the trackpad so I could use the trackpad uh, as well as move the uh, character around here at the same time. But once I did that, I was able to get everything to work uh, pretty well. And again, I'm very impressed with the frame rate here, uh, sometimes going as high as 50 frames per second, uh, and usually hovering around 30 frames per second. Uh, there's another benchmark I started running called the 3 d Mark Cloud Gate. And this is really uh, a best uh, uh, kind of comparable to a modern game, something that uses a little bit more resources perhaps than uh, Minecraft might. So the pavilion here scored 1145, about five frames per second on that test, uh, which isn't a lot, but when you compare it to some of the other computers out there at its price point, uh, it's about the same. Now my high-end gaming computer that I have at the top there is really what uh, you would normally run a game like that on. So you can see the kind of the performance differences uh, between the low end here and the high end, uh, but those of course cost a lot more. But uh, for games like Minecraft and a lot of the tablet games, you know, Fruit Ninja and that kind of stuff, uh, you're gonna have a really good gaming experience on here. All right, one last thing to check out, and that is its Kodi performance. I have connected an external hard drive to its USB here. I was having a hard time getting uh, some of my Blu-ray MKV files. These are huge files uh, to stream over my wireless network to it, but the hard drive here uh, seems to work just fine with that. So we'll uh, take a look at my Star Trek movie I was watching earlier, and as you can see here, uh, it spins up very quickly off the hard drive, and I hadn't had any uh, drop frames or anything like that. It really played back quite nicely. So again, a really nice uh, display to watch movies on, and if you have uh, you know, an SD card with some uh, movies on there, they should play back just fine through Kodi or Plex. Uh, it'd be a good viewing platform for that. So that is the Pavilion X2. I have to say, this is a really nice computer. I would say really good for kids because it's not all that expensive. Uh, you do get a full working version of Windows on here. You've got the tablet functionality to it. Uh, very easy to put back together. It is uh, not easy to break it by accident by snapping it back too far. So there's a lot of things that they thought about uh, that kids might put through it. Uh, it's got a decent webcam for uh, doing uh, Skype and other things on there. And uh, the keyboard certainly the right size for little fingers. And I was surprised that uh, it is as good as it is because it really is deceiving. When you look at these tiny keys, you think, oh, it's gonna be a crappy keyboard, but it actually is uh, very functional as a keyboard. Even for me, the touch typer, who's very uh, picky about uh, the keyboards that I use. So I was really uh, pl quite pleased with that. A good selection of ports on the side and a really nice display uh, that will play back movies quite well. Uh, you probably want to load movies onto an external device like a memory stick or a, a SD card that you can stick in the side just to augment some of its limited storage. There is a 64 gigabyte version of this available also that costs a little bit more, but I think you know for the performance, you're probably going to see about the same just by popping a, a SD card there in the side and storing your media on there. So it'll work well. It'll play up to a Blu-ray MKV as you saw. Certainly uh, lower impact movies that you might buy from one of the uh, online movie stores will work uh, just as well on here too. And I have to say it's a good uh, overall package. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.